Hi everybody, welcome back to Rose and Jones. So today I am going to be reviewing the House of Le Orchestra Parfums. I did mention in a previous video that I had the Discovery set. The Discovery set is called La Repetition. And of course this house is a house that is inspired solely by music. It's a really beautiful concept. The house started up in 2017, I believe. The first fragrance was launched in 2017. The most recent one was launched just last year in 2019. There were six fragrances so far from the house and each one is accompanied by a piece of music. I actually first heard about Le Orchestra through Clements, the channel Clements CC Fragrance. She's a beautiful French reviewer. Do check her out, absolutely love her channel. She's cute, quirky, lovely channel. And she talked about a specific fragrance, a fragrance that just sounded so amazing and beautiful. I had to get the sample set. So this video obviously is a review of each of the fragrances, but also I'm being a little lazy and I'm going to do a two-in-one video. The super lovely Barry from Centralized tagged me to do the fragrance occasion uh, tag. A tag where I need to choose every fragrance for an occasion or from one house. So the reason I'm incorporating this video is because I've decided to use Le Orchestra. So I'm going to leave the tag until the end to get straight into talking about these fragrances because they are all beautiful. So this La Repetition sample set comes as seen and it comes with it comes with a handwritten card which I don't seem to have on me, I think it's upstairs, but it's a lovely little handwritten card and you also get a card explaining each of the fragrances. It's nice to get a nice description of each one and list all the notes. Now one thing you do get which I really appreciate is the scent sticks, so helpful when you're testing out fragrances. So that's a really nice touch to accompany the, uh, the box of samples. Now I personally love the concept in its entirety. To link music and perfume is kind of both beautiful and poetic. You take a, a selection of notes and arrange them together to make melodic magic for the senses. I don't know about you guys, but I just want to jump in and start talking about these fantastic fragrances. We're going to go straight in and start with Flamenco Neroli. Now if you go online, go on the website, it's a beautiful website and I love how they've described everything and the whole arrangement of all their fragrances. You will find this lovely fragrance accompanied by a flamenco piece of music and if you smell the fragrance with the music it just enhances the whole feeling for everything. It's just a beautiful touch. Flamenco Neroli, I do love a fragrance that does exactly what it says on the tin. Okay, This is a Neroli fragrance, it's not trying to be anything else. It's not a super sweet Neroli, it's not something being enhanced by sugars. This is actually quite a natural, authentic smelling Neroli. So just taking you through the notes here, we have Neroli, we have Bergamot, we have uh, Bigarade, which is a bitter orange, I hope I haven't pronounced that too badly, Ginger, Jasmine, Virginia Cedarwood and Atlas Cedarwood. I've just sprayed that again just to give myself a reminder of how it opens up and it does open up sweeter than it dries down so it opens up with a really beautiful burst of Neroli but also that bergamot it sits on top so you get kind of a sweetened, uh, refreshing, invigorating kind of scent. I find the Jasmine is the, such a beautiful balance with the Neroli. You do get this lovely soft floral and it's never too sharp which you think it could be with Jasmine and Neroli but it's really not. The ginger gives it a really beautiful brightness as well and as this dries down the sweetness really does move aside and what comes up is a very what I consider to be a very natural Neroli plant. It becomes slightly earthy. It have a kind of grainy sensation like I don't know if you ever smelt sesame sesame seeds but if there was sesame seed in this I would understand it. It has that kind of grainy scent. So there's two types of cedar in here so you've got quite a lot of cedar in the base but it does stay quite low down it never gets too woody it just gives it a bit of a grounding. But one thing the notes never do is take over the Neroli. It remains a true Neroli fragrance. Very natural, very earthy and very organic. It really reminds me of one of the fragrances from the um, Sylvain Delacorte Orange Blossom line. One of them did smell like this very much. I think it was the one that had the sesame seeds in it. Or I think actually no, it was the one that had a very strong pettigrain note. I love that the bergamot remains and the ginger remains but it just softens right down. So you just get just enough sweetness to give this a tiny bit of lift hint of that bitter orange to keep it just refreshing enough but it never weighs down the Neroli and it really remains a polished and sophisticated Neroli scent. So that is Flamenco Neroli. So next up we have Tea Da Buca. and if I tell you this is an oud based fragrance you might possibly think of something very deep and very loud. I found Tea Da Buca to be the perfect balance of tea, oud and fruits. Uh, the notes are bergamot, caraway which I believe is like cumin Candied fruits, immortal, oud, cocoa, and styrax. So, on first spray, you get a beautiful, smooth, deep, rich, fruity 
oud. The oud is not strong at all. Can you imagine a whirlpool where all the ingredients and notes are spinning around and at the very base of the whirlpool you've got the oud. The oud is creating everything and it never takes over it just does exactly what it's supposed to do which is to be this grounded base. So this fragrance makes me think of a, of a rich deep fruitcake like Christmas fruitcake that's been maturing for months. Beautifully juicy but it's really rich and dense and probably laced in alcohol and then you've got a lovely cup of tea right but not like breakfast builders tea you've got a cup of Earl Grey because it's slightly floral and slightly spiced and you've just got a splash of that on the cake the tea kind of cuts through that heaviness and just gives it some lift and a bit of balance. Another thing this, this fragrance takes me to is the image of an Indian souk. I've never been to India and I certainly haven't been to a souk. But, you know, I've seen them on films and things. Uh, so a souk market where you've got all sorts of wares, you've got spice people selling maybe different types of tea, different types of candied fruits, these selections of, of raw oud that you can burn and all those beautiful aromas in the air that's this fragrance as well. The Immortelle in here is just creating this slightly dry breeze and it's also a slight powdery aspect which could be from the cacao but I don't really detect that. The candied fruits and the bergamot stop this being just another big dense fragrance. It does have some lift and some you know nice little sweet elements. It's a really warming comforting scent and I want to say it's a wintry scent but that tea is so beautifully balanced in here that I think you could almost wear this all year round. This is not a bombastic scent. To throw another analogy here, I also think of a Victorian kitchen where they're making dough and they're making currant buns and you've got spices. There's something slightly, not doughy, or maybe doughy, I don't know. There's a lot of images that come to mind with this. But overall, it's a, it's a fruity, juicy, rich, deep oud with an uplifting tea note and it is really, really beautiful. So next up we have Incense Asakusa. It's an aromatic, spicy incense fragrance. So this fragrance has myrrh, olibanum incense, pink berries, cypress, iris, violet and white musk. When I first sprayed this scent, I smell every single note. Every single note comes rushing up my nose and it's beautiful. It's so peppery, but it's bright and fizzy peppery. It's, it's sparkling that beautiful warm peppery myrrh, you've got the incense, you've got the bit of sweetness from those pink berries that kind of smell pink actually. Um, the cypress trees give you this sort of, you know, that sort of evergreen sharp minty edge. Iris is a bit kind of powdery, you've got a touch of violet. The musk I think is underpinning everything, it's just bringing it all together. It's so beautifully balanced. As I literally bury my nose into this scent, which makes it tickle a bit, but I like that, that's fine. I'm transported into this beautiful log cabin where you've got incense burning, you've got all sorts of aromas in the air, and it's definitely freezing cold outside. It's probably Christmas time, let's say. But the window is just cracked open very slightly, and there's a subtle chill just drifting in through the crack of that window. That is the scent. Because despite all the spices and that warmth and that aromatic incense, everything, there's just a thread of chill, a bit of a thread of a coldness and sharpness and freshness. There really is so much going on in one scent, but I think everyone that smells this will have possibly a different opinion. They might pick up on different things, which would be really interesting. It's not the kind of fragrance I would normally enjoy and love. Very heavy with the kind of spices and the pepper, a fairly dry scent. The juicy pink berries in here stop it being too arid, and it's just balanced and I love it. I'm actually addicted to smelling this on my wrist, I really am. But again, like the first two, it's not too loud. It doesn't take over everything, it just remains this beautiful scent bubble around you. So Incense Asakusa, a perfect incense fragrance for me. So next we have Kriakora, and this is a bright fruity leather scent. With notes of mango, cardamom, elemi, leather, labdanum, palisander wood and benzoin. Now elemi is a resin that's taken from a tropical tree and it's used in varnishes and aromatherapy. I haven't resprayed this one because the opening is incredibly bright, incredibly sharp and piercing and I don't want to take over the other scents that I've got on my arms. So referring only to my notes, I've written that it opens incredibly sharp, like really sharp, bright and strong and I think that is the elemi. That opening of both elemi and benzoin 
is so vibrant that it's as though it's burst through a container that was under pressure. It's just that first hit of something that was pressurised and was waiting to get out. But the scent of the leather is there as well. The real sharpness does disappear slightly, but you are left with quite a sharp leather for a good um, good half an hour to an hour. I would say. It takes a while for it to sort of subside. And it's quite a, it's quite a resinous, rich feeling to the leather as well. The dry down is where I really, really enjoyed this fragrance. The leather is very smooth and very beautiful. It's still a bright leather, but it's like this fresh leather. And there's this beautiful ribbon of both cardamom and mango kind of running along the same line as the leather. Fairly sweet, slightly spicy, but there's also this varnish sensation, like that LMI left a varnish on the leather. All that sharpness slowly slips away and you get right into the very, very dry down. You're left with a really beautiful leather and it's a vibrant leather, but it's not a slap in the face as it was when it opened. A buttery leather with a hint of varnish, beautifully balanced once again with its other notes. That lovely milky sweetness from mango and then obviously that smooth, beautiful cardamom. I think I found this one to be the longest lasting of the ones so far anyway at I think it was about six hours I could still smell it quite well so yeah that is Queer Cora and that is a lovely aromatic spicy fruity leather so next up we have Piano Santel and this is the one that most people have probably heard of this is the fragrance I heard Clements talking about so of course Santel is sandalwood this is a sandalwood fragrance it has notes of white sandalwood cedarwood white musks heated skin <laughs> bergamot and Broxin Warm Milk Caraway. I've got no problem reapplying this. I will reapply this everywhere. This is stunning. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but whenever I spray a fragrance that has a strong note of sandalwood, it always ends up like coconut. It has a real coconutty sensation, just more woody. And I don't mind that. I was interested to see how this one would turn out because obviously this is all about the sandalwood. This opens out like the most beautiful polished wood with cream like imagine someone's dropped I and mean, it's quite a messy image but you've dropped this warm cream or milk that's slightly spiced with cumin slightly down a piano we had pianos made of sandalwood although the sandalwood does still have that hint of coconut that could just be me it's just, it's only a very slight edge what I actually love is the fact that the sandalwood does smell like wood. It smells like proper wood, but wood that's been varnished. And the fact that it's been varnished means it doesn't get lost, doesn't blend out too far. You've always got this true running of sandalwood. It runs right down the middle, slightly encased in varnish and cream all around the outside. It's really lightly spiced. That caraway or cumin can often smell rather nasty on the skin, from what I've heard anyway. But this is just enough to give it a bit of grit and a bit of lift. In its entirety, I could almost think of spiced white chocolate. More woody, I suppose. The scent is so damn elegant, so sophisticated and professional, and so polished. And I'm happy to say it has zero development. And as much as that may sound like a bad thing, the scent is so beautiful. It just softens slightly. Obviously, it's going to dry down eventually and disappear. You know, that's going to happen. I love that it stays peppery and spicy and creamy and woody. It just gets softer until it disappears. And that's it. That is Piano Santel. Just stunning. So last of all, we have a sample of Rose Trombone. Actually, we can do better than that. Oh, the power of perfume and music. I went ahead and ordered Rose Trombone. Now another great thing about this, this fragrance house is that you will get the price of the sample box off of your first purchase. Now I've had this sitting for a little bit. I've been dying to crack into this box and I've been waiting so that I could do it with you guys. Okay, here we go. Rose Trombone is a fruity rose. A really lovely fruity, fruity rose. Let's go for the notes. It has rose, it has clean notes, pear, vanilla, sandalwood, uh, white musk and rum. Okay, here we are. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, look at that. And so here we have the presentation. So it's a very classy, simplistic, or rectangular glass bottle. Very, very clean and classy. The name of the fragrance is along the side there. 
Rose trombone is a fruity rose, but this one has a beautiful polished sandalwood. It opens up so colourful that you can almost imagine these massive big red roses and red berries. The only fruit listed is pear. The pear is adding so much sweetness. Rose is so big and velvety that the combination of those two notes just is putting this red colour in my mind. Now along with that really fruity, fruity rose, what you also very quickly start to detect is that polished wood. Now it's not a varnish this time, this is wax. It's a more waxy finished sandalwood. And that waxiness is just starting to grab hold of the rose and make it very slightly lipsticky. And as you detect that wax, you very quickly detect the wood, along with something quite deep and boozy, which is that rum note. Despite everything being so beautifully blended, it doesn't blur anything out. Both the fruity rose and that boozy wood is very clean, almost kind of glassy. And by glassy, I just mean being at the opposite end of something milky. It's glassy and almost has a shiny scent, like a shiny texture. This fragrance does not, in my opinion, does not lean feminine or masculine. Every fragrance at the orchestra is perfectly unisex. And this one is a crisp, clean, boozy rose. It's adult, it's professional, it's incredibly elegant and incredibly classy. There's just enough sweetness in Rose Trombone that gives it a little nod towards being just a tiny bit playful and charming. Probably wear this for any occasion, any season, and just feel really, really classy and sophisticated. And that is Rose Trombone. And that is our final Lee Orchestra fragrance, and there we finish the review. I find them all to be very distinguished and very distinct in their character, and they're also very distinctly different. A fragrance for every occasion as well in this house, which brings me on to, of course, the next chapter, which is the fun tag that, of course, Barry has tagged me in. So let's get into that. Right, so the first category or occasion is date night. So date night, it's just, it's just got to be, hasn't it? It's just got to be rose trombone. It's, it is romantic. It has that, what I consider to be a giant red rose, rose trombone for date night. So next occasion is clubbing. Okay, well, I want something a bit bolder, perhaps a bit sexy maybe, a bit enticing. I think I'm going to go with T, T Dabuka because it has warmth, it has, um, it has a bit of sex appeal, a bit of depth and mystery, touch of sweetness from them fruits. So I think that would be a lovely scent for clubbing. So next up is Gentleman's Club. We're meant to adapt it, I don't know. Let's just stick with Gentleman's Club. You could wear any of these, but I'm gonna go with Queer Cora, the spicy fruity leather. It's a really beautiful, relaxing, but sort of slightly um, edgy scent bubble. So. That's the one I would go with. So next up we've got winter. I, it's just got to be a Sakusa. I think I'm saying that correctly. It just has to be. This is this is just a lovely wintry day when you're wrapped up inside in the warmth with your with your incense and you've got spices in the air and you know it's snowing outside and you've got that coldness, that crisp coldness. This is a winter scent. So next up we have summer. I think that's going to have to be flamenco neroli. It has such a lovely bright burst of that neroli. It does have that really vibrant opening from the bergamot, floral balanced neroli with that lovely edgy earth in it so it doesn't get too sweet, balanced and easy to wear. So yeah, definitely would choose that for summer. So for spring, I'm gonna go with two of them because I wore two today that I was reviewing and they actually worked really lovely together. The neroli and the piano santal. You've got that lovely bright natural neroli, which of course is quite invigorating and very fresh. The Santel kind of warmed it up a little bit and made it really interesting. I really enjoyed smelling these two together and it would actually work really well in the spring, I think. So let's just go with that. Next up, we've got Office. I would wear Piano Santel for the Office. I think you could wear any of these in an office. I'd want to feel professional, but kind of understated, but really classy as well. It's just so bloody gorgeous. So that is, yeah, that's my Office scent. Next up, we've got the Gym. I, um, I think the obvious choice probably is Neroli because it has that fresh bergamot opening and it's quite invigorating in a more natural way. The gym hasn't been my forte for quite a few number of months, so let's move on. Lastly, we've got a signature scent. Signature scent, I honestly, I think out of two, I would happily wear them every day. Happily, happily. It's Vienna Santel or Rose Trombone, depending on how I'm feeling. So there you go. And that swiftly ends the video. That's that. I really hope you've enjoyed hearing about the House of Lit Orchestra Parfum. Pop downstairs, let me know your favourite. And also if you've actually tried any of them. 
And that is all guys, I'll leave you there. Take care, I'll see you soon, over and out.